everyone and welcome back to some god tier coverage on the channel and today we're going to be featuring a new champion and also I think this is the first time we've used this table layout as well or this side of one of the boards that come in the starter sets rather than the neoprene mat. We're also doing one of the mission types or scenarios from the rulebook we've never done. This one is called Change and involves shifting around the existing god tiers on the table uh, rather than adding or subtracting any of them. So a lot of movement in this one. And it's another two-on-two -two champion video. Eventually we will get back to three-on-three. -three. Uh, to make that better for viewing purposes, waiting on some base toppers arriving that will make it much more obvious who's on which team, uh, which should help with watchability, I think. But in the meantime, two-on-two, -two, let's take a look at who's playing. So here is our Team Blue this time. We have the new champion on the block, Fenra who has been provided to the channel for free by Steamforged. It will be available at the end of April. So this is a trial run to see how her and her chainless curs do. She's a Maelstrom champion, so she wants to take out followers. She wants to murderize them. She also has a lot of abilities involving forced movement or additional movement, that kind of thing. And Rangosh is also new to the channel, but uh, not a new hero or anything. Been available for the game for a while, just recently got him finished up. And he is very, very killy. He is a Slayer champion. He wants to kill enemy champions and he's willing to sacrifice his Red Bandit followers to do it. He can kill them to get more dice uh, thrown in for attacks. I don't quite remember if it's damage or a uh, hit chance, but either way, he can kill them to get more dice, and we'll see that as we play. So they are going up against Team Elf. Let's go take a look at them. So this will be our Team Red this time, comprised of Finvar and his Shadow Sentinels, and then also Lorsan and her Mistwood Rangers aka all the elves. I think these are all the elves currently available for the game. I might be wrong, uh, but I think it is. Either way, they'll be teaming up today. Finvar is a guardian champion. He wants to put his banner down and keep it down for the turn. He has a little bit of movement involved with moving uh, flags. And Lorsan is a slayer. She wants to kill enemy champions. She's very good at it at range, but she is pretty fragile if you can get past her pretty decent dodge. So with that, we'll get set up see what change looks like on the board, and then get started. So both sides are set up, and it will be Team Blue at the top of your screen going first in the plot phase. They've rolled off and that was the result. And Team Red are at the bottom of your screen, shown where they are, yeah, where you can see them. For change, you only get the first hex on either side as your deployment zone. There is four god tiers in the middle, two on the right flank, two on the left flank, you can just about make out. And the loser of each round gets to move, I believe it's dice roll plus something, hang on, uh, let's see. You roll four dice, then move to that many different objective hexes, one by one, onto an empty objective hex. So, four dice, roll that many, or move that many, onto an adjacent hex. If there's anyone on the hex, they move with the hexes. And on the ladder, on the score ladder, you start one point closer to the centre. I think that about covers it. We're ready to jump into the first plot phase, so let's get this start. So let's cover what Fenra and her Chainless Curs got up to first. Fenra activated, she only moves one in the plot phase unless there's a target within three, then she can kind of shenanigans it with the wolf, uh, the wolf is loose ability she has. But she only moved up one and then she used Bark at the Moon. Followers within two hexes can move two hexes. So she moved all her Chainless Curs forwards too. Then they went, they used makeshift plating to give themselves an armor boon and then just did a move and they also only move one if they can't actually reach someone to attack in the plot phase. They, they both move faster in the clash phase. And over the other half of Team Blue, Rangosh activated, he moves three in the plot phase so he kind of charged forwards. Then he used Channel Rage to give himself an attack boon, just pumping himself up for the battle to come. His Red Bandits then activated, they move two in the plot phase and they did so to kind of keep up with their boss. They don't have anything else they can really do. Um, they can do automatic wounds or true damage wounds if there's a target within range, but for now there isn't. So they're just trying to keep up with their boss. Over to the Red Team's plot phase, Finvar activated first, moved forwards two and then used Poised to strike to give himself a movement boon he can take advantage of in the clash phase. His Shadowed Sentinels moved up two, keeping up with him the same speed wise, and then used Protect on him, it's range one, and gave him a defense boon, so a lot of buffing going on. And it was very much a unified front by the Elves, Lorsan moved up two and then used Field Instruction on the Shadow Sentinels to give them an attack boon for the clash phase. Then Hermiswood Rangers moved up two, again keeping up on the line, and used Blur to give themselves a dodge boon. And with that we're going into the clash phase, with Team Blue picking the first thing to activate. 
Not a super bombastic way to start the clash phase, but Rangosh activated, moved forward in the clash phase. He moves two. He did so, but the only other things he can do in this uh, phase is attack and murder things, because that's his whole deal. So he isn't doing anything else this turn and is just sitting tight there. First activation in the clash phase turn one for Team Red was the Mistwood Rangers. They moved up three and that put Rangosh in range three so they could just do their fire command. Uh, range three, five dice for hit, five dice for damage. They just had to beat his four dodge and then he has two armor. They got him for three which is pretty decent. He has seven health though so he's got four left but he is hurting a little bit. Rangosh's Red Bandits followed suit following after their champion by moving two hexes in the clash phase. They couldn't get into range though, they do have a, a ranged attack, they love using crossbows and whatnot. It's range 3 though and the Missoud Rangers are at range 4 currently. So they weren't able to reciprocate the damage but they're getting a little bit closer. Finvar activated for Team Red and moved up 3. Uh, he did have a movement boon which would have meant he could move 4. He only wanted to move 3, unfortunately the boon still gets used up. But he moved on to an objective hex which means his passive now kicks in as well called ba Banner Warden. If he's on an objective hex, all his skills have plus two accuracy dice. So it'll make him a bit more threatening. He can't do anything this turn, though. He needs to be point blank range to do damage. Finra's Chainless Curves activated and moved up three. Uh, the cluster of three on the left really wishes they were on the right because it would have made what happened next probably more successful. But the lone Chainless Curve that it managed to get adjacent to Finvar used Maim and Encircle. But because there was only one of them, it was only four dice accuracy and four dice for damage, and Finvar is dodge four, so the hit effect did not come into play, didn't even get to roll the damage. If he had landed the hit though, he would have, well, moved on to potentially do some damage, but also been able to move backwards a hex to protect himself. As it is, he's now a bit exposed, but they do have that defense buff from the plot phase. Lorsan activated, leaving just the Shadow Sentinels to go for Team Red. From where she started, she used a piercing shot, hex range 3, 5 dice to hit, no damage roll required, it just does one true wound, and she did it on the cluster of 3 chainless curs, and got past their dodge 4 and killed one of them for one step on the ladder. Her passive then kicked in, shoot and scoot, so if she lands a hit that does damage she gets to move one space, which she did so, which is why she's where you see her. She then tried to do a sniper shot, 8 dice to land the hit, and then 4 dice for damage, uh, to hit the lone chainless cur over here obviously with eight dice for accuracy the hit got through but they had three armor with the defense boon two armor normally and she was unable to actually deal damage so he lived but that did give them one step on the ladder for the one that did go down which might be enough that, that takes the first round for them because there hasn't really been much scoring Last clash phase activation in the first turn for Team Blue was Fenra herself. She moved up a massive four uh, right on to the god tiers in the middle map and adjacent to Finvar. She then used Feral Bite as range one, six dice for accuracy and then four dice for damage. However, plus one damage die for every adjacent friendly. So thanks to that single Chainless Cur not going down, she was rolling five. Now Finvar's defense was buffed up from three to four. His dodge was also four but she did actually manage to nibble his heels a little bit for a single point of damage, leaving him on 4 health remaining. He has 5 normally. So it's over to the Shadow Sentinels to end off the first turn. The Shadow Sentinels moved up 3 hexes and then used Life Trade range 1 into the single Chainless Cur. 5 dice for accuracy, 5 dice for damage, and if they were below maximum numbers, if they get a kill with it, they get a free reinforcement. Didn't matter in this instance. Uh, did use up their attack boon as well, so technically it was 6 dice for damage. Either way though, the Chainless Cur went down. So that is another step on the ladder for Team Red, and that does take us to the end of the first turn. So here's a look at the score ladder on the side of the battlefield, just to show that Team Red was able to pull the first marker into their half by 2 for killing 2 followers. Nothing else happened that scored points in the turn, so Team Red secures the single victory point of the 5 needed to win. And that means that Team Blue is moving around some god tiers and can pick whether or not they go first or second in turn two. The rolls already happened, but the hexes haven't moved yet. They'll be moving three of them. So let's take a look at the battlefield and see which hexes move. So a bit of a pullback view here just to show which god tiers have been moved. The one that was there has been moved to the right one hex. The one that was here has been moved one hex. And the one that was here has been moved one hex. So it'll be a bit harder for Team Red to get banner plants that are safe at least for the next turn. 
Um, but Team Blue has opted to go first, and we'll be doing their plot phase in a second. Plot phase for the second turn. Fenran or Chainless Curs went first in the plot phase. The Chainless Curs did a recruit action to bring back one of their number and uh, was adjacent to Fenran because there's a couple of blank squares there now that they can be reinforced there. They then did makeshift plating to give themselves an armor buff. For Fenra's turn, she stayed where she was. She used Bark at the Moon to make the Chainless Curs all move so they're all on that same tile you can see them on. She then planted her banner on this god tier for one step on the ladder. Rangosh was up next. He planted his banner on the objective hex you can see before you for one step on the ladder. Then he charged forward right into the faces of the Mistwood Rangers. That has got to be intimidating. The Red Bandits followed behind him, moving two squares, heading more towards the centre and Finvar and his Shadow Sentinels. They have to be adjacent to do the uh, the damage they can do in the plot phase, so they're not doing anything else with their other action, because they haven't lost any numbers, they would be able to do a, a recruitment, but no need. Pull back a little bit to cover Lorsan and her Mistwood Rangers, because she's actually separated from them. Lorsan used Field Instruction to give an attack boon to the Shadow Sentinels there. She then moved two to try and get into position to crush Fenra's banner in the clash phase. And the Mistwood Rangers themselves, they kind of backed off from Rangosh, surprising nobody because he's kind of scary. They then tried to hit him with Fairy Fire, uh, five dice because there's all three of them to hit and if they land the hit it would give him a defense down negative. But they missed. They couldn't get past his dodge 4. He's actually very spry for a gigantic horrifying monster. So that is them done. So the Shadow Sentinels used Protect to buff Finvar by giving him that defense up uh, boon. And then moved going after the Red Bandits. Finvar himself, he used Shadow Ward. It's a hit effect that moves the target up to 1 hex. It's got range 2. 5 dice normally but because he was on an objective hex he was rolling 7. And it's just as well because it would have been a miss otherwise. He hit Fenra with it, doesn't do damage or anything, but did force her to move back one, so for his other action he planted his banner, which might be a little bit hard to see, but it's right here. It's the sword, and that gives them one step on the ladder for Team Red. So that is the plot phase done for everybody. Into the clash phase, Team Blue selecting first. So Fenra got the clash phase started, and we got to see what she can really do here with lots of movement shenanigans and... Uh, team up because she loves like ganging up on targets. Well, she moved first of all to move back onto the hex she was originally on, destroying Finvar's banner in the process, so it's not going to score at the end of the turn for a lot of points. Then she used Shatterstorm, it's called range 2, and she targeted the uh, Shadow Sentinels. 5 dice for accuracy, 4 dice for damage, however, plus 1 damage die for every hex adjacent to a target that has a friendly follower in it. Now, as far as I can tell, friendly follower means doesn't mean it only affects uh, or buffs if the chainless curds are there. It's any friendly followers. So the Shadow Sentinels were adjacent to the Red Bandits, uh, one hex at the time. So that reads to me that she gets plus one damage. If that is wrong, I apologize, but that seems to be it. That's, that seems to be her whole thing. So rolled against two of them because you have to target two followers within range for the attack. Managed to take out one of them, could not get through the defence for the second, but with the one she did manage to take out, that is two steps on the ladder. One normally, and then one because she is a Maelstrom champion. Then her passive kicked in. When Fenra knocks out an enemy follower, move a friendly model within three up to one hex, but only it can only affect the same model once per turn. So she picked the three hexes away square that had two red bandits, moved them forwards, one put them in the fight a little bit more. And yeah, that's definitely where Fenra excels. It's all movement related stuff with her. Lorsan activated first for Team Red and she got a little bit unlucky. She started with a piercing shot into the chainless curves just to try and take one of them out for a free step on the ladder and then also to activate Shun Scoot so she could use that to crush Fenra's banner. But she wasn't able to hit them. The shot actually missed. In hindsight, Snipe probably would have been a better choice. But that isn't what she did, so it couldn't do shoot and scoot. So she had to use her second action to move to crush the banner to stop the four points at the end of the turn. So she moved from there, right onto the banner, and didn't really do anything with her turn. That was a bit of a whiff. You may not have been expecting who activated next for Team Blue. It was actually the Red Bandits, because they are decent in the clash phase as long as they're in range. They started by doing Ambush, it's only range 1, but they were adjacent to the Shadow Sentinels. 
It's five dice because the hex with three of them did it, so that's the most dice you can roll. They actually did get past their four dodge, and it just does automatic one wound as a hit effect. You don't roll for damage, so that outright killed one of them for one step on the ladder. They then used their other clash phase action, which is shoot, up to range three from a hex with three of them, five dice for hitting and four dice for damage, and they managed to take out the other and final Shadow Sentinel, so that is all of them gone. They will still get an activation, they have to do a forced reinforce to start with, uh, but they are currently gone, and that was the second step on the ladder when the second one went down, so the Red Bandits did really well there. Team Red activated the Mistwood Rangers, that's the ones with Lorsan. They immediately fired upon uh, Rangosh again, got through his defense and hefty dodge again, and did two damage, putting him at five damage in total. He has two health left. They then retreated as their second action, three hexes back from where they were, all the way down to here. Rangosh is not going to be able to catch them as is, and now he's really close to death and giving up a lot of steps on the ladder. Chainless Curs were up next for Team Blue. They immediately did a reinforced action, which brought back the one they were missing on a hex adjacent to Fenrir right there. They then tried to use Mim and Encircle from the hex with three of them. Five dice to hit, five dice for damage but they were not able to land the hit on Finvar with his four dodge, sadly. If they had landed the hit, they could move one of their number around, and that would provide later bonuses because of their gang up rule, which we haven't really got the chance to see yet. But it would, uh, would make things more accurate in general. The Shadow Sentinels activated for Team Red. Of course, there was none of them left on the table, so they immediately were forced to do a reinforce. One reappeared next to Finvar. And then he used Life Trade, and because there was only one of them, he was only rolling four dice for accuracy, four dice for damage. But he did them into the Red Bandits, they're not super great. Three dodge, two armor. He was able to get damage through to kill one of them, which also gave one step on the ladder. And Life Trade kicked in, which means because they were below full strength, they respawn another unit. So there is now two Shadow Sentinels on that one hex. They've got Th uh, Finvar left to go, but first of all, it's back over to Rangosh to end off the second turn for Team Blue. So Rangosh activated and ran away. But this is important. This is where the strategic layer and the depth comes from God tier because Rangosh is activating. Finvar goes after him. If he was to go after the Shadow Sentinels, yeah, he might kill one. Uh, it's not super likely he'll kill Finvar, especially because Finvar's still got a defense buff on him, so he's defense four currently. Um, it's much more likely that Finvar could kill him, although he wouldn't do it this turn because killing... Rangosh with Finvar would just equal what Rangosh's banner is going to give, so essentially they cancel each other out, meaning that Team Blue is still taking the round regardless. That means Team Red would lose, so they would pick to go first. First thing they'd do in turn 3, kill Rangosh. So Rangosh needs to get out of there so that it's harder for that to happen at the top of the next turn. So that is why he has retreated over here. It also means that unless he takes damage in the plot phase, he'll be able to get his banner down again and somewhat offset the likelihood that he's going to go down. So it's playing the numbers here and that is the smartest bet. It does mean Finvar is free to do something else other than go after him, but that does seem like the smartest choice there. And that is Team Blue done for the second turn. It's over to Finvar to end things in this round. So Finvar unleashed his life blade, normally only four dice for accuracy, but because he was on an objective hex at the time, he was rolling six. He did it into the hex with just a single chainless cur. He hit, five dice for damage, killed him, one step on the ladder. That's not enough to change the result for the turn, but setting up things for his other action, he then just moved off of the hex he was on. Again, this is planning ahead because round three is the big important one because it's worth three points. So he's just setting himself up for good stuff to come, and that takes us to the end of the turn. So you'll see at the top of the screen the number two marker is very in Team Blue's favour, meaning that they take the two victory points this round is worth. Team Red has lost the round, the rules already happened, they get to move three objective hexes as well, at least that's staying consistent. So we'll check out which hexes have been moved to where, and then go into the plot phase for the third turn, which is the really important one because of how many points it's worth. So Team Red opted to move some objective hexes all around the middle here, the ones on the sides have not been touched. The one that was here has been moved one, the one that was behind Fenra has been moved here, and the one that Laura San was standing on has been moved and she moves with it. So Team Red has opted to go first, so we'll be handling their plot phase to start with. Oh, before we actually activate anything, quick correction, forgot to move the token last turn to account for Rangosh's banner being on the table still, which would have given four points, so it would have been even more in... Team Blue's favour, just forgot to move it at the end. Um, obviously doesn't change anything. But also forgot to mention that when Finvar killed the single chainless cur, 
with his life blade, it healed the one damage he had. So he's currently at full health. Just while I'm remembering to get that on camera, a couple of things forgot to mention. So, back to what was happening. Finvar activated and immediately planted his banner here in this hex for one step on the ladder. He then used uh, Poise to Strike to give himself a movement boon to make use of in the clash phase. His Shadow Sentinels did a reinforce action to bring back their missing man over here. Then the hex with two of them did Snare. Range one, because there was two of them, it was five dice for accuracy. On this hex with the two red bandits, hit them and applied a movement debuff for the next time they decide to shift anywhere. Which I think might bring them down to zero in the plot phase. Oh wait, no, no, they can move two. So it brings them down to one. And the rest of Team Red, Lorsan activated, moved one hex right next to Fenra, then planted her banner here for one step on the ladder. Her Mistwood Rangers moved to the hex you can see them on, putting them within range three of Fenrir, and they used Fairy Fire, five dice at range three. Had to beat five dodge on Fenra, but they actually managed it, or, you know, equal or beat. And they did get it, which did a defense down boon, or negative rather, on Fenra for the next time she's attacked. Over to Team Blue, starting with Rangosh and then his red banners. Rangosh planted his banner again to try and offset the other two enemy banners on the field. So one point now, and then if it's still there at the end of the turn, four points. Because there's no, uh, well, if Finvar's at the end of the turn, he would get five. He then moved his three, I believe it was. One, two, three, yep, to the hex you can see him on. The red bandits reinforced to get back their missing man. So this hex here now has three. Then the three of those did ambush. Five dice for hitting. Did it on the Shadow Sentinels, had to beat four dodge. They did so. It does one automatic wound. And they have killed one of the Shadow Sentinels. On that hex for one point on the ladder and over here fenra placed down her banner there for one step on the ladder it's now one step in the favor of team blue at present she then moved only one step in the clash phase to the hex you can see her on for hers and then for the chainless curves they used to corner them range two if they're attacking with three which is what happened they rolled six dice for accuracy they did it on finvar they were able to get through his four dodge thankfully and it doesn't do any damage, but for a hit effect, you then place each chainless cur within range of the target in a hex adjacent to the target. So they have surrounded him, except the god tier because they can't stand on that, and the banner is there as well. And for their other action, they use makeshift playing again to give themselves that defense boon. So with that, I believe that is us ready to go into the clash phase with Team Red picking first. Well, the original plan for Team Red was to activate Finvar to go after Rangosh, but he is penned in now thanks to the Chainless Curse surrounding him, and he isn't allowed to walk on his own banner. He can only walk on enemy banners. So he couldn't do the job, so Lorsan had to activate, and she pretty much had to guarantee killing Rangosh for them to take this round, or to comfortably potentially take this round. And she started by moving three, or sorry, moving two of her potential three onto the objective hex there to crush Fenra's banner, so that's not going to score at the end of the round either. She then used her ult, Death Blow. Six dice for accuracy, range three. If it lands, it does two true damage. And she did that, because that is enough. The Rangosh gets murderized. He gets pushed back two, which is a rule often forgotten, and falls over. Now, he'll still get a turn. He'll be able to stand up and have one action. But that, thanks to her being a Slayer, gives them five points on the ladder, putting it very, very into their favor. Well, it's over to Fenra to try and make a difference this round. She activated, did a movement action for her first thing, moved over here, crushed Finvar's banner to stop him getting five points at the end of the turn. It might make a difference. Then she used Feral Bite, range one, six dice accuracy on Finvar, got past his four dodge. Uh, his boosted defense put him at four. Four dice for damage, plus one for every adjacent hex to the target that has a friendly follower in it, though, so she had three extra damage dice thrown in. All said and done, managed to get three past his defense, leaving him on two health. Finvar activated and gave himself a void weapon, which gives him an attack up boon. And then he tried to use his life blade, four dice accuracy. If he hits, uh, it would heal him for one and do five dice worth of damage, but he's not on an objective hex. So he wasn't rolling six dice and he really felt that difference trying to hit a, a chainless cur with four dodge. He didn't land the hit. He keeps the attack up buff, but that doesn't seem good for him. The Chainless Curse activated and immediately did a reinforce to bring back their lost doggle <laughs> right there. They then tried to do a Maimon in Circle on Finvar again to try and kill him. 
just 5 dice accuracy, 5 dice damage. They managed to land a hit, but didn't get through his defense. So, no damage there. Finvar's still on 2 health remaining. The Mistwood Rangers activated and had pretty much the luckiest turn. Well, not even luck, but they stood where they were. They did their fire attack, range 3, into Fenra. 5 dice for accuracy. They managed to get through with a fantastic roll to beat her 5 dodge. And because of that defense down buff she had, she was armored 0. So it was just a straight damage roll of 5 dice. And they spiked, did 5 damage, and just took her out. So, knocked back for 2. Knocked over, and 4 steps on the ladder for Team Red. One, 2, 3, 4, maxes them out on their side of things. Which is pretty bad for Team Blue this round. But, if Team Red win this round, which they're pretty much almost dead set to now, they don't win. That puts them at 4. So we will have to have another turn. The Red Bandits didn't have a great turn to end off the Clash phase. Oh, actually, Rangosh still gets a turn, although it's only one action. Uh, they tried to ambush the Soul Shadow Sentinel, who's the only one left to go for Team Red. Weren't able to land the hit to do the true damage that would have killed him. So then they did a shoot action on Lorisan and got the hit through, but she blocked it. They didn't do well with the damage roll. She only has one armor, for the record. So, bad, bad turn for the Red Bandits. That's them done. Shadow Sentinels, only one of them's left alive on the table, I believe. Uh, oh wait, no, sorry, there is two. There, is a, there was a reinforced one next to Finvar there. So there's two of them on the table. Let's see what they can do. So the Shadow Sentinel to the left of Finvar used Life Trade to try and get a kill on a Chainless Cur to free up movement and also to just try and get a free reinforce. Actually managed to get past their Dodge 4, but didn't get past their Armor 2. So didn't do it, so just as their other action did a reinforce to bring a second one back on that Hex to the left of Finvar. And now it's over to Rangosh who immediately has to rally and then he has one action. There wasn't much else that Rangosh could do. Stood up, rallied, and he just walked forwards two hexes for his turn. So that takes us to the end of the third turn, and it's a clear victor in this one. Well, it is a clear victor in this round, as just stated. It's right at the Team Red icon. Um, Lorsand's banner ended the turn on the table, as did Rangosh's. They cancel each other out, so it doesn't move at all. But the three massive three victory points does go to Team Red, putting them at four, so there is still everything to play for as we go into the next round, although if Team Blue win the next round, that only puts them at four. So start of the fourth round, Team Blue has opted to go first and they were moving three hexes. This one has been moved one, this one has been moved one, and the one that was on Lorsan's left has also been moved one. With that, we're jumping into the plot phase for Team Blue. So in the plot phase, Fenra had to rally to get back on her feet, but then she used her ult, Call of the Hunt. She picks another model within range 3, friendly or otherwise, it just says another model, and you can move them 3 hexes. So she charged Rangosh in, so that Finvar is fully encircled by both friendly and enemy, just to try and guarantee that he's going to go down this turn. Uh, the Chainless Curs, they're doing nothing. They already have their makeshift playing buff still, so they didn't need to do that. Uh, they're already all adjacent, they can't do any damage, so they're just encircling Finvar and trying to keep him there. Rangosh channeled his inner rage to give himself an attack boon back because he lost it, even though he never used it because he died and you lose all boons and debuffs and whatnot. He then tried to break spirit on Finvar but actually missed on 6 hit dice. Would have lowered his dodge, but sadly didn't land it. The Red Bandits didn't knock over the mini, but they ambushed the lone uh, Shadow Sentinel over there, took him out. It does one true damage as long as it hits for one step on the ladder in their favour and removing the threat over there. So they're, they're back down to two. But they're doing nothing else with their turn. They're just staying there, I think. Um, actually, no, sorry. No, they're not. These three are moving there to protect Rangosh's banner and they are moving there to try and keep Lorsan out of their way. That's them done now. So Finvar found a way to slip out first of all. The Shadow Sentinel was reinforced to start with to get back up to the full 3 on 1 hex. They moved 2 out of the way, giving Finvar that 1 hex uh, gap to fit through. He moved 2 over here and has planted his banner there as his other action. The Mistwood Rangers stayed where they were, but used Fairy Fire to hit the Chainless Curs and actually got them with a the Defense Down debuff, so that overwrote their buff they had sitting on them. Lorsan up at the top there, she moved one hex to the left and has planted her banner. So as we end the plot phase, the score marker on the ladder is still one in the favour of Team Blue and they are getting first activation. 
Team Blue got started with activating Rangosh and he redeemed himself with his actions. He started by using his ult. It's called Beastly Charge. You move him up to two hexes, then you make place up to two wounds on an enemy within range, and the range is one. He charged forwards two hexes, said, Hey Finvar, have these two wounds, they were made for you. Taking Finvar out, pushing him back, knocking him down, and that's five steps on the ladder because Rangosh is a slayer. He then, for his other action, did a move. He can move two, so he crushed both their banners. That is a pretty amazing turn. Lorsan was up first for Team Red, and the plan was simple. Use Snipe, because with eight dice to land the hit, how could you possibly miss? Get rid of that Chainless Cur, and then walk over and crush Rangosh's banner. Um, she missed. It wasn't even a case of not rolling good damage dice. The Snipe with eight dice was not able to get through the four dodge of the Chainless Cur. So then she did a Piercing Shot. Only five dice to land a hit, but it does one true damage. Of course that landed and took out <laughs> the Chainless Cur. Still one step on the ladder though, so it's not like she did nothing. But if that had gone perfectly, then it would have removed four points at the end of the turn. Oh, by taking the banner that you can only barely see, sorry, down there then, bottom of the screen. Down the bottom half of the table here, the Chainless Curs activated, congregated on the hex in front of the Misswood Rangers, used Encircle, uh, sorry, Maimon Encircle, managed to get through to do one damage, and as a result, they've kind of shifted to start surrounding their prey. Well, to retaliate with that, or to that, the Miss Ruth Rangers activated and tried to shoot some arrows into one of the Chainless Curs. Uh, with only two of them firing, it was only four dice accuracy, four dice for damage. They didn't get past the four dodge, so after that, they retreated three hexes over to here, just to try and reduce the chances of going down. They didn't think reinforcing would be a good idea because it'd be up by Lorsan, and she's in a little bit of danger. Rangosh's red bandits moved up to surround, well not surround, but face down Lorsan, I guess they're all in front of her. And then the hex with three of them shot at her, uh, five dice accuracy, four dice for damage, had to beat her four dodge, but she only has one armour. And all said and done, they did three damage to her. She has three health left, because she has six in total. The Shadow Sentinels also kind of ran away. They came down in a kind of an L shape, three hexes just so they could touch the lowest chainless cur. They attacked him with a life, uh, not life blade, sorry, uh, life trade. They got him, they're already at full numbers, but they did take out one other chainless cur for one step on the ladder. So the last activation for Team Blue in this clash phase was Fenra. She moved adjacent to Lorsan, opted not to attack because it's looking like Team Blue is taking this round, and if that happens, with them only activating Finvar, uh, left to go and he only has one action because he has to rally. Uh, there's going to be a final turn, it's going to go the whole distance, so Finvar doesn't want to take out Lorsan yet, better to do it in the next turn. So just standing next to her, intimidating, doing nothing else. Finvar got up on his feet, nothing he could do will change this round going to Team Blue, so he moved uh, up to three hexes, well, I believe he only moved one, right next to the two god tiers on the left flank of the table just prepping for that final turn which is happening but let's go look at the ladder just to confirm it so you'll see the marking there but also rangosh's banner lasted to the end of the turn which would stand at four more up there so team blue does score oh, i apologize for being out of focus the two victory points this round is worth putting them at four as well so we have to play the fifth round the fifth round is only worth a single point both teams are worth four, uh, sorry, both teams currently have four, and it's five to win. So it all comes down to this, with Team Red setting up or moving some god tiers and then presumably going first. It all comes down to this, I don't think we've ever had a match go to the final possible turn. And Team Red is choosing to go first, however, first we have to cover change. Uh, they got to move three hexes again, so the one down here has been moved once. The one Fenra was on has been moved with her, once to the right. And the one that was there has been moved one to the left. The team, uh, team red is choosing to go first, so we're going straight into their plot phase. This is exciting. Finvar and his sentinels were up first. Finvar immediately planted his banner for one step on the ladder. Then he moved his two onto the objective hex that ended up over there. So his attacks have buffed accuracy currently. His shadow sentinels, all they did was move to where you can see them. Couldn't get close enough to buff anyone's defense or debuff anyone's movement. So they're just trying to stay back to avoid giving off uh, cheap steps on the ladder by dying to, you know, crossbow shots or whatever. Lorsan's quite separate from her Mistwood Ranger, so we're going to have to pull back for this shot. But uh, Lorsan herself retreated two steps and then did Fairy Fire into Rangosh, five dice accuracy, got the hit and gave him a defense down debuff. 
the two surviving Mistwood Rangers she currently has didn't want to reinforce up by her, so they moved into position behind the Sentinels here and gave themselves or reapplied the Blur, which gives them a dodge boon. Over to Team Blue for their plot phase. Fenra went first, moved forward one step towards where Lorsan is and placed her banner on the god tier she was standing on for one step on the ladder. Her Chainless Curse just did two reinforce actions for the two they were missing and they have spawned next to Fenra and also right next to Lorsan. And over here, Rangosh stepped one hex to the left and then placed his banner for one step on the ladder. And then his bandits, the hex with two kind of moved out of the way so the hex with three could move up adjacent to Finvar. They then used Ambush, 5 dice accuracy, and if it lands it does 1 true damage, which is exactly what happened. So Finvar is missing 1 health as we go into the Clash phase. There were some tough choices for Team Red who to activate first. They eventually went with Lorsan to try and get her away from Fenrir and at least have her do something. She moved her 3 hexes onto this god tier, crushing the banner that Rangosh put down to stop that scoring at the end of turn. Yes, it puts her in danger from getting smacked by him, but from where he is, Finvar can't reach it. He doesn't have enough movement. So she had to be the one, plus Fenra might be about to take her out. So she did that, then she sniped and shot one of the poor red bandits in the head, took him out for one step on the ladder. Rangosh activated first for Team Blue, and he finally made use of his Brutal Master trait to brutal effect. Uh, brutal Master, he kills one of his own red bandits adjacent to him to either get plus one extra accuracy die or damage die. He attacked Finvar, he used Jawbreaker, which is normally just three dice accuracy, he put up to four, which was risky because Finvar is dodge four, but he got it, he got it with a five. So he hit him and it's seven damage dice. Uh, also just for hitting him, he knocks him away one hex whether it does damage or not, so he bounced Finvar away. Then he did seven damage with his damage roll, so Finvar gets knocked back an additional two hexes because he is taken out, out of screen almost, and that is five steps on the ladder because Rangosh is a slayer. He then almost got a double kill. He used Whiplash, his other attack, up to range two, five dice accuracy, five dice damage. He killed another one of his own red bandits to get six accuracy, did it on Lorsan, landed the hit. The damage roll wasn't quite enough. He did two damage to her. If he'd done one more, he would have got a double kill for ten steps on the ladder. As it is though, she is set up to hopefully get taken out by someone. I think Red Team's going to need a miracle to come back from how many points Rangosh is basically securing there. But the Misswood Rangers activated and they fired on Rangosh. They've been the bane of his existence, honestly. They got through his armour, got through his dodge, hit him for 3 damage. But he does have 4 left and it's not likely he's going to take that from anywhere, but he could. Um, so to really guantee the win here, um, Lorsan's got to go down. Oh, and for their other action, sorry, they decided to retreat to avoid offering some easy steps on the ladder. Well, this was the decisive activation, really. Fenra moved up to Lorsan, attacked her with Feral Bite, 6 dice accuracy, was able to land a hit, only 4 dice for damage, but plus 1 damage die for each adjacent friendly follower. So she was rolling 6. Uh, got 2 damage through, which is precisely enough that Lorsan goes down. Now, it's worth 4 points, not 5, because... Uh, Fenrir is a Maelstrom champion, not a Slayer. But that does max out their side of the ladder, just double checking that there. Mathematically, even though Finvar can do one action, can come back and do one action after a rally, uh, and his Shadow Sentinels have still to activate, it's mathematically impossible for them to recoup the difference because there's only one net, if we pull out a little bit here, there's only one net gain for Finvar's banner surviving to the end of a turn it will generate five points instead of four Fenrir's is also going to last till the end of a turn which will give four net positive of one maybe a follower will go down for one and maybe Finvar could kill another one for another one he can't get to and attack Rangosh because he has to rally if he didn't have to rally he absolutely could he might take Rangosh out which would be the difference maker potentially although I don't think that's quite enough either so mathematically it is impossible for Team Red to take this back at this point, so we are just going to end there, thanks to Rangosh's amazing turn, honestly. That one victory point, turn 5 is worth, goes to Team Blue, and they take the win, just barely. So in a game that went the full possible distance that you can go, we finally have our winners. Just barely though, if Rangosh hadn't had such a great turn there, 
Finvar could very well have taken him out, which would have balanced things out a little bit. Uh, Fenra, if she hadn't taken out Lorsan, I think it would have been super... It would have come down to what the followers could do, of all things, not the champions. Everyone was tapped except Finvar, ultimate-wise, and his ultimate isn't that relevant. I think it's one of the weaker parts of him, to be honest. But either way, that was incredibly fun. It went in the distance for the first time ever on the channel. And as I say, next time, we won't necessarily go straight to 3-on-3 three three next time, but hopefully next time there should be uh, some base toppers so that at a glance, if you're just watching along at home, it'll be easier to tell who's on which team if you know, you're not familiar with the, the units and the champions and whatnot. So hopefully we'll see that next time. Uh, they're coming from America, so no guarantees they're going to be here quick. Uh, with that, as I hear my dog barking at something, I'll say thank you very much for watching. I just pretend that's Fenra. It's, it's, it fits the theme, it's fine. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ta for now.